الذي وضعته على الليل فأظلم وعلى Ali Ezvacı Tahirat Evlendi Resulü Eshabı Bidin Efendilerimizin ve Sahih Enbiya Azam ve Resulü Kehani Hatıratın Ervah-ı Şeriflerine ilimiz Bilal-i Havaşi Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin ve Ağrı Kutsuz bu caminin bahisi ve bugüne kadar bu caminin güzel hayretmiş ve muazzin kayınlarım ve kafi ehli ervah-ı iman için sahibu seyf şahabı kökü ve serabani için Allah rızası için en Fatiha أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا All praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the universes. All praises are due to Allah, who is the first, the last, the manifest, the hidden, the one who has might and power over all things. All praises are due to Allah, who has created man to know him and to worship him. All praises are due to Allah who sent Sayyidina Muhammad as the guide to the path of truth. And may all peace and blessings be upon the piercing star, the chosen one, the spirit of truth, the spirit of justice, the key of mercy, Sayyidina Muhammad and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Khulafai Rashidin that Holy Prophet is saying about them. The most merciful of my ummah towards my ummah is Abu Bakr. The one who adheres most strongly to the religion of Allah is Umar. The most sincere of them in shyness and modesty is Osman. The best judge is Ali. Ya yuhal mu'minun, O believers, welcome to you on this holy day of Juma, which is falling in the month of Zulkaida. Welcome to you as we are approaching to the days of Hajj and Qurban. May we make our hearts to be prepared for the coming days so that we are ready to receive the blessings that are raining down to the earth from the heavens. O oh, believers, today is the holy day of Juma. The day of Juma is a day of gathering 
And Rasulullah has told us that it is holier than both of the Eid days combined. This is the day for the believers to come together as brothers to sit and listen to the Imam and to learn something that is going to benefit them and apply it to their lives. For this day to be holy for us, we have to show it the proper respect. Imam al-Ghazali Sir is saying, only that believer is blessed with the blessings and benefit of Friday who looks forward to it anxiously and eagerly. And wretched is the heedless one who is not interested in it and who does not even know in the morning which day has come. So inshallah Rahman, we should put our hearts in this Juma so that we may find its blessings and its benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, say, O Muhammad, to mankind, say, if you love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. Allah is forgiving, merciful. Sadaqallah al And the Holy Prophet is saying in this Hadith al-Sharif, none of you will have faith till he loves me more than his father, his children, and all of mankind. One time the Holy Prophet ﷺ was sitting with his beloved companion, Hazrat Umar al-Faruq radiallahu an. Hazrat Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, you are more beloved to me than everything else except my own self. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ replied saying, No, by him in whose hand my soul is. You will not have complete faith until I am more beloved to you than your own self. And then Hazrat Umar said, Now I swear by Allah, you are more beloved to me than my own self. And the Holy Prophet said, Now, Ya Umar, now you are a believer. What are these ayats and hadiths showing to us? They are showing that the foundation of a believer's faith is the love and submission to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. The foundation and the completion of our faith is the submission and love to the Prophet ﷺ. And they are showing that the person who does not have love of Rasulullah ﷺ in his heart, it cannot be considered a believer. For us to learn what love is, we have to look at what love means from the creator of love, Allah Azza wa Jalla, and from whom he calls the Holy Prophet والسلام, his beloved. From that, we are going to get an answer to what it means to love according to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the ayat we read at the beginning of the khutbah. For the Holy Prophet والسلام, to say to the people, if you love Allah, then follow me. So what is the meaning there? The meaning is that the love of Allah is connected to following the Messenger, والسلام. It is not only connected, it is a condition. It is a condition of obeying and submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have to obey and submit to the Holy Prophet, and that is the condition of a kalima to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. And if we want to learn what love is, what kind of love is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we want to learn what it means to obey and to submit to the Prophet, والسلام, we need to look at the love of his companions. We are not going to make up what it means to love the Prophet ﷺ in these days according to our own philosophy or concept or culture or according to what society is saying what love is. We need to look to those ones who for 23 years they have given up everything for the love and the submission of that Prophet. They are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Sahaba Kiram, after the Prophets. And we find that just like Hazrat Umar radiallahu an, they made their Holy Prophet alayhi wasalam, more beloved to them 
than their parents, their children, and even their own selves. These are the ones who say, may I be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. These are the ones who say, may my parents be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. These are the ones who say, may my children be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. These words, if any Muslim were to say today for the sake of the Prophet the Muslims themselves would be the first one to say, don't say those words, it will lead you to shirk. Your life should only be sacrificed to Allah. They will be quick to make takfir to the companions of the Prophet They didn't just say these words. They did sacrifice their lives for the Prophet. They did sacrifice their parents for the Prophet. They did sacrifice their children for the Prophet Because Rasulullah he is showing us only Allah. Their love of the Holy Prophet was not with just words. It was rooted in sacrificing everything in the way of Allah. Look at the example of the master of the friends of Allah, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Hazrat Abu Bakr, before Islam, he was one of the richest people inside of Mecca. He had multiple businesses and he was well respected, not only within the community, but he was also known and respected amongst the leaders, amongst the kings and amongst the Kaisers living at that time. After the Holy Prophet he declared Islam, he gave up everything. He sacrificed everything. It's not only his material and what he has, he owns, but he sacrificed his friends. He sacrificed his contacts. He sacrificed his high influential people that have shaped and opened the world for him. And one time he came to the Holy Prophet with all his wealth, all his possessions, everything he had worldly, and he gave it to the Prophet for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Islam. And when the Holy Prophet asked him, Ya Abu Bakr, what did you leave for your family? Hazrat Abu Bakr replied, Allah and his messenger. But there is an inner meaning to this as well. Hazrat Abu Bakr is not just finding a nice answer to give. You can only give when the Prophet asked him, what did you leave for your family? You can only leave for your family what is halal and what you possess. And it is showing the high rank of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq that he already has possessed Allah and his Prophet. That he has Allah and he has the Messenger and he says, because I own this, I bequeath it to my family. But after this incident, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, he did not come to the masjid. So some Sahabi, some, the Holy Prophet وسلم, sent Sahabis to find out what had happened to him. They came back and they reported and they said, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Bakr has given everything he owned in the way of Allah and his Prophet. All that he has left is a piece of cloth that he is sharing with his wife. They trade it with each other when it is time for prayer and that is all that they have. This is from a man whose friends are kings and emperors. This was a man who possessed everything that these Arabs at that time had ever wanted. And when he gave it up, he did not give it up with regret or longing. He gave it up with love and with willingness, understanding what a burden this material world is if it is not in the way of Allah. When the Holy Prophet ﷺ heard this, he sent Hazrati Bilal to go to Hazrati Fatima's house to see if she had any extra clothes to send to Hazrati Abu Bakr. But all that was in the house of the Prophet, all that was in the house of Hazrati Fatima was a piece of goat skin. When Hazrat Abu Bakr tried to wear it, he found that it was too short. So he sewed palm leaves to it and he started walking towards the Prophet 
before Hazrat Abu Bakr reached Hazrat Jibrail salam, the archangel came in front of the Holy Prophet wearing the same clothes that Hazrat Abu Bakr was wearing. When the Holy Prophet salam, asked Jibrail salam, what he was wearing, Jibrail said, Ya Rasulullah, today all the angels in the heavens are dressed like this to honor Hazrat Abu Bakr, the loyal one, the generous one, the faithful one. And today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending his blessings and greetings to Abu Bakr. And Allah has sent him a message saying, tell him, his Lord is pleased with him. If he is pleased with his Lord. When Hazrat Abu Bakr came inside, Holy Prophet was smiling and gave him this divine message from the Lord of the worlds. And when Hazrat Abu Bakr heard this message, he got up and said, Indeed, I am pleased with my Lord. And with his joy, he started whirling three times. This is just one example from thousands of Sahabis. This is just one example from tens and thousands of Tabi'in and the friends of Allah and the Salihin. And what they felt when they gave and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave in return. And that sacrifice, with that sacrifice, it pulls the love of Allah and His Prophet. And when you have the love of Allah and His Prophet, everything in creation will love you. Except for those who do not love Allah. Because Hazrat Abu Bakr gave up everything for his holy prophet والسلام, he was given the greetings of his Lord. This is the spirit of Islam. This is sacrifice. And as long as the Muslims had that spirit, we had honor and we had majesty. As long as the Muslims were ready to give up from their dunya, from their families, from their own lives in the way of Allah and his prophet, Allah raised this nation but for the last 100 years, this nation has found itself in the worst situation. Because we have been taught that we must love this world. We have been taught to keep this world close in our hands and close to our hearts. We have been taught that if we run to this world, the world will run to us. We have forgotten about the creator of this world. And we have forgotten about the Prophet and about Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. We fell in love with this world and we became very afraid of death. We traded the love of Allah and His Prophet with the love of this temporary lying dunya. And for that reason, this nation is falling lower and lower every day. Oh believers, we need to wake up. The Ummah Muhammad والسلام, needs to wake up. The need to return to the love of Allah and His Prophet. We need to return to the way of the Sahabi Kiram. We need to wake up to that spirit of sacrifice that inside of our hearts again, if we do that, then inshallah Rahman, the help and mercy of Allah will come back to us. Our Shaykh, Sahibul Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabri Siyar Rabbani, Qadas al Nasir, said to us The first people who came and accepted the Prophet, والسلام, they didn't come accepting the laws and the rules. They came accepting the Prophet والسلام, and they started loving the Prophet والسلام. That love moved them. It dragged them to do what the Prophet was doing and they were running to do what the Prophet was saying. They showed so many signs and they were loving to the Prophet. They immigrated, they left Mecca, everyone, with one word of the Prophet they left. They left everything. They immigrated to Medina. They left everything. So many people left their parents. So many parents left their children. So many left their belongings. They had everything. They left them behind and they went with the Prophet with nothing. That love moved them. If we are not moving, then something is wrong with our love. Something is not letting us move. Love, it moves the mountains.
We're asking our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that kind of love that is going to move mountains. We're asking for that kind of love that comes from obedience and sacrifice. We're asking to have that love that is going to pull the love of Allah and His Prophet. We're asking to be counted from those ones who in these end of times are written as the servants of Allah and the servants of His Prophet. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa min Allah hu tafiq. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim al-lazim. La ilaha illa. Ma tu gulay. Tabat al-abzis. Masha'Allah. Ma ta'ala. La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku al-hamdik. Shain kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku al-hamdik. Shain kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku al-hamdik. Subhan kudusun rabna rabna malayka tawarra. Subhan kudusun rabna rabna. لا إله إلا أنت سبحان الله كتب الصالحين لا إله إلا الله إن دين عند الله الإسلام قام الصلاة الله مسلم الله بيكرام الله بيكرام الله بيكرام الله بيكرام الله شدوا النعيم إن الله شدوا النعيم إن الله شدوا محمد رسول الله شدوا محمد رسول الله يا الله سنا يا الله سنا يا الله فنا يا الله فنا كتب قام صلاة قام صلاة الله بيكرام الله بيكرام لا إله إلا الله